Hello. Hello. <laughs> Didn't see you there. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How's it going? My name is Arabella Spinoza. I'm here joined by the amazing Diane Villitsen. Um, we're so excited that you're here. Um, I'm excited to yeah. be here. Tell us in the chat um, where you're watching from. Um, we always love to know um, who's in the chat. I'm going to put these on because I can't <laughs> actually see. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, Austin. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Michelle. We've got a lot of people coming in right now. <laughs> uh, they love the shades. I'm awesome. It's your signature thing. Yeah, they match the background. <laughs> Awesome. We are excited to be doing this live stream with Diane. We have two days of awesome um, retouching, compositing, um, everything about composition and color, um, everything that Diane is all about. So hi, Ariane. Hi, Jacqueline. We've got someone from Dallas, Texas. Netherlands. From India. Oh. That's all from Netherlands. Awesome. Why don't we keep the sunglasses? <laughs> we don't keep them because I can't see. <laughs> They're so dark. And I'm editing. <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone, awesome, we're so excited. We've got a full um, schedule today. So right now, um, today we started um, the daily Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. So Kathleen went over the intro, so make sure to watch that um, and register. So we've got our first challenge tomorrow. So um, go ahead and watch that replay. And then we've got Diane until about 11.30. Then we've got Peter and then Justin after um, for the Adobe XD. So we're really excited. Um, ooh, we've got someone from Pakistan from Austin, Texas. Awesome, we love seeing where you guys are watching from. Cool, well, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about um, the chat and win. Um, in about a half an hour, we will have a little giveaway. Um, so make sure that you're active in the chat because you'll have a chance to win some stickers from Sticker Meal. So Fun. that'll be super exciting. <laughs> cool, from Kenya, hi Ian. That's so awesome, yeah. we've got a full house. So yeah, so we're really excited to have you here. and. Um, Diane actually and I have a special connection. Yeah. I like, <laughs> I was super obsessed with her work, um, just like as a photographer myself. So, um, found her through her presets. She actually creates, um, like presets that you can have on Lightroom or on a, mm -hmm. do, uh, a Photoshop Lightroom. and yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. So found her through there and just, uh, really loved her work and somehow became friends with her. <laughs> so I'm just excited to be hosting her today. So. Yeah. yeah, so Diane is a creative photographer um, based in the Bay Area, and um, yeah, if you'd like to introduce yourself yeah. and talk a little bit about you. So I right now I do lots of different types of photography, but mostly it falls into the commercial conceptual category. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of clients here in the Bay Area, but ultimately what I'm my goal is with every photo shoot is just to create something really colorful, really fun, and odd, something unexpected. <laughs> And if I kind of weird people out or make them pause, I feel like I've done my job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually studied linguistics. People always ask me if I ever took photography classes, but I only took one just as kind of a random class. And mm -hmm. I attribute most of what I've learned to just practicing over and over, like shooting all the time. Yeah. And I think that's the way to go for most things you want to learn. And yeah. uh, I guess just, uh, I used to do like more senior portraits, more consumer type portraits, and it's kind of evolved into working for companies and brands, which is what I've always wanted to do. So yeah, yeah let me pull up your here. Instagram too. I want to see. I want to show you guys just how amazing her work <laughs> is. It's all about color, all about composition, um, just like really unique stuff. I love your <laughs> style, and it's and so Arabella, eye catching. Thank you. And Arabella honored this color palette today. With honored her. this color palette. Had to wear the lavender <laughs> jumpsuit. Yeah. <laughs> So fun, but just really, really unique um, poses and just, it's just like like wonderful and, and weird all in the same, you know, <laughs> yeah, space. Wonderful and, and weird is a good yeah, combination. Yeah, wonderful and weird, <laughs> we love it. And yeah, uh, she's got presets. So I wanna show you her website real quick. Um, if you go to uh, dvillitsonphotography.com, make sure to check it out because she's got a lot of work that she shows on there, but also, Diane's super passionate about education, so <laughs> she has a lot of fun stuff, a um, lot of guides, tips, and just like, she also has a YouTube channel too, where you mm -hmm. kind of show yeah, different things. Yeah, lots of tutorials things. So lots there. of tutorials, so make sure to take advantage of that. But I'll just kind of quickly go through a little bit of your thing. And your style's evolved kind of yeah, you know, over time. Yeah, it used to be, I, I used to work with a lot of earth tones, and then I, that grapefruit shot right there, yeah. uh, 
that's when, that was kind of the shoot that changed everything. I was just kind of like, after that, I was obsessed with colors and I just left that shoot feeling like, wow, this is what I need to be doing. Yeah. So from, that was like May 2016, I think. Amazing. And ever since then, I've just been, I dove full, head first into color. So. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Very into the color coordination. And it's just all, yeah, monochromatic. It looks amazing. Thank you. But, yeah, and you've got a couple of, I love this shoe too. This one's so fun. Oh yeah, we're gonna be uh, editing some of these today, so. Cool, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, do you wanna talk a little bit about what you're gonna be yeah. doing? So, I have some shots here where uh, we're gonna kind of just talk about improving composition overall in Photoshop. I'm gonna start out in Lightroom, do the color toning yes. and the editing, and then anything that's kind of more advanced, we're gonna pull into Photoshop. So we have some of these unedited shots, or well, let me show you what this is gonna look like. So do you always start in Lightroom? Is that your like I do always start process? in Lightroom cool. because um, the way processing raw files, I like to do it in Lightroom first because then once you bring it into Photoshop, um, the file format changes. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We're, we're gonna be taking a look at all of these and Amazing. just showing this process with as much time as we have. And <laughs> I, I'm i not sure if we'll get to these others, but we'll see. So We'll see. <laughs> Aw, Kendall, love Diane's work. Excited for this stream. Oh, thank you, Kendall. <laughs> um, hi, John. Hi, Tareem. We've got a couple of new people. If you are just joining us, we're here with Diane Villetson. Um, she's going to be showing us a little bit of her retouching, her process, and we're starting in Lightroom first, so. Yeah. Cool. So I'm just, these are my presets right here, Pop Candy. And uh, I, I like candy colored tones, Love. so that's the name, where the name comes from. And I'm just kind of looking through here, seeing what I like best. I think Gumdrop is a nice place to start. And... Um, How long did it take you to come up with like the, the presets? presets? Yeah. It was kind of an evolution because I had other presets before mm -hmm. this, as you remember. Yeah. And I think it just... Like I'd been editing so long and then I was like, why don't I, you know, I have my own kind of signature style, style now, why yeah. don't I release that in the form of a preset? So I just kind of developed it over time and suddenly, like literally in a weekend, I was like, I'm gonna release preset, yeah. presets this weekend. And so that's Was that challenging? A little bit. It was, it, yeah, it, it was, I got more of a response than I re expected at yeah. first, yeah. but um, it was challenging to like come up with enough unique settings yeah, yeah. and Well, and then versatile. so that they can work with a ton of images, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's kind of the well, hard part. I actually, this is a good point to make right now. Um, I think it's important as you're developing your style to kind of stick with it because your editing style relies so much mm -hmm. on the consistency of what's in front of the camera. Like if I tomorrow started shooting like green grass and mm -hmm. bright blue shirts and like, I don't know, just colors that I never work with, I would have such a hard time editing them. And that yeah. does happen occasionally when uh, I have a client that like brings in this whole new this color whole palette new color and I'm like, like uh. how do I handle this? <laughs> <laughs> but so that's what I think it's more important to focus on developing consistency in front of the camera first and then presets help when you hone down your style yeah. and just, yeah. you know, get consistent with that post-processing. Yeah, awesome. So landed on Gumdrop here. Um, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to just amp up the highlights a little bit. I really like low contrast, so just navigating all those, uh, that, that balance. Yeah, you've always got that soft look to your images. Yeah, and so, I actually, so speaking of that, usually, see I have minus seven on clarity. I decrease the clarity quite a bit usually mm -hmm. because even though you would think like an unsharp image is not what you want to do as a photographer. Yeah. But I, I like kind of like this soft, dreamy yeah. look. Yeah, And then, what I'm noticing, well, actually one thing I always need to do is enable profile corrections. <laughs> and that just kind of fixes the distortion around the edges of the mm -hmm. lens. And then I'm seeing, so this green here, it's originally like a, a brighter mint green. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I go too pastel with my clothing. <laughs> like if I tried yeah. to shoot your jumpsuit, it would yeah. actually probably be like very faded in yeah, the picture. Yeah, that's true. So sometimes you have to like paint it back Bring in. Bring it back in, yeah. And I could do that in Photoshop, but personally I like doing it in Lightroom. So I'm going to amp up the saturation and make it a green kind of bluish tint. We'll see how mm -hmm. that looks. And I'm just painting that color back in so that 
it doesn't look like she's just wearing kind of like a gray and white shirt. Federico has a question. Um, he's from Italy. Can you please tell me why Lightroom instead of Camera Raw? You know, that is actually a good question. And uh, I just haven't gotten into Camera Raw. I feel like I should, but so far my workflow at this point is just Lightroom. Yeah. Um, I've heard really good things about Camera Raw, but I haven't looked into it myself yeah. yet. I, it, that should be a good step after this live yeah. stream is try out some <laughs> Camera Raw. I, I, I wonder if it's because when you're in Lightroom, it's kind of easier to batch edit too. Yeah. You know, that, whereas Camera Raw, you kind of just work on the be. one image. That's why I don't like Photoshop for like, like if I have just a lot of similar photos that I'm bulk processing, I usually won't op open them in Photoshop because it's like much more of a like mm -hmm. save each photo and one by one versus Lightroom, I copy and paste settings usually. Yeah. So I think that's a pretty common thing, but I know some people who like don't even use Lightroom and yeah. exclusively use Photoshop, Photoshop or- of course. Yeah, so those greens are looking pretty good. Nice. They're kind of back to their original yeah, back saturation. To <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm pretty happy. I think it needs to be just a little brighter. Sometimes I go too bright and I like don't know when to just- <laughs> When to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so feel free to cut me off if you're watching and you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> Um, I'm going to make the reds, sometimes reds and oranges kind of blend together. Like if I go to the orange, it's, see the reds are registering as orange and their skin is like ghostly now. But um, I just want it to be like the right coral tone. So color wise, their skin is a little bit desaturated. Maybe we just yeah. want to keep the oranges up and then the reds down. That's looking better. And now I am going to right click, edit in Photoshop. Cool. And what we're gonna do from here. I love here, that feature, like that yeah. you can just bring it over. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> I love the integration of Adobe products. Yeah, they work seamlessly, it's awesome. Oh, ignore this. I have some weird color profile situation oh. <laughs> going on, but we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> so. I'm just gonna be cleaning up. So I would be happy, like two years ago, I would have been totally happy with this photo. I would have just left it like this. Yeah. But lately I'm finding myself even more obsessed with like making everything perfectly, Perfect. mm -hmm. you know, distraction free. So I'm using the healing tool, which looks like a Band-Aid. Okay. Which I also just press J to access. Nice. Then I'm holding down option. I'm sure most people know this, but in case you don't, I'm selecting the source with option. And then I'm just gonna, Nice. Get rid of some yeah. of these little spots, and I keep changing the source to make it look kind of like, what's around yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's surrounding the spot. <laughs> Voodoo Bell says, "Diane, we're cutting you off from color." That's what we'll say. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> cutting me off from color. <laughs> oh God, a world without color I would know. be so depressing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, if like the neutral aesthetic is your thing, that's fine. But like, but I colors. couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, and I'm just like finding these major little spots. Major little, that's kind of a contradiction, but. <laughs> and I just wanna remind you guys too, um, we will be doing portfolio reviews at about an hour and a half from now. Um, so Diane will um, I would be able love to, to see your review work. some portfolios. So if um, you wanna submit, you can uh, submit over in above the chat. Um, there's a submission for a portfolio review. So uh, make sure to submit those in and Hopefully we get a chance to review one of, one of yours. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to show you, instead of the healing depending on the area, and this may or may not work because it's kind of close to an arm, I'm going to lasso this junky stuff, <laughs> and then I'm going to right click it and do content aware fill. Oh, nice. Yeah. And we'll see if it repairs the grass on its own. I love the content of our tool. Me too. It's, it's magical. It see, magical. That oh, see, that actually looks pretty good. good. Yeah, that did a good job. And I'm just going to like touch it up a little bit with the healing brush. Because sometimes with the healing brush, you can it, you can see it. It, it looks kind of spotty if you're really looking at it. But I think also the grass is just kind of spotty by itself. Yeah. <laughs> just a few more little leaves. I love the concept of like the hats covering. Yes, um, I love facelessness. Models. And is this your parents? These are my parents. So cute. If they're watching, yeah, hi. They're, <laughs> they're, hi, mom, dad. <laughs> I, I have a series that's, um, and it's called Old Friends, and I shoot people that are ideally 55 and older. So cute. And you don't have to be a couple or anything, so if you have like a cute grandparent or parent or anyone that has a companion yes. that would 
be in front of my camera, contact me. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, these are I my parents. That. We were on a trip <laughs> together and they were kind enough. I brought wardrobe for them with us and they were kind enough so to cute. model for me. And this was like in Hawaii, it's really hot and humid and they're just like so <laughs> exhausted by me, but Aww. it's nice. That's awesome. Very, very nice for them to be <laughs> willing models. <laughs> yeah. Um, one other small point I want to make is, I don't know if any of you submit to stock websites, but I submit to Stocksy and these photos are on Stocksy and uh, they ask for no logos. So Photoshop mm. is a major tool for removing logos. Like right now I'm getting rid of that Crocs logo. Yeah, smart. And same thing here. Removing logos is like one of the most frustrating <laughs> yeah, parts of Yeah, especially when it's on a weird like part yeah. where like there's like shading or like yeah. the light is when like, it, like changes from, yeah. with something. That's always so difficult, but. Yeah, so we're gonna leave it. Oh, and also you can see he's wearing our famous sunglasses Ooh, under yeah. here. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do command S for save and that will update our changes back in Lightroom. Amazing. So we can see that it just looks a lot cleaner, distraction free, mm -hmm. very stylized, which is what we were going for. And this is very minor, but this green up here is like slightly bothering me. So I'm just going to <laughs> desaturate it a little bit. And you can do edits after you bring it back from Photoshop. Just keep in mind you're working with a TIFF and the color settings are a little bit different, mm -hmm. but you can still tweak things. I just wouldn't rely on like toning it after it's yeah. been in Photoshop yeah. too much. But everyone has their own workflow. I just don't like to do that. <laughs> so Hi, I Mikhail. just soften Someone that. from Russia? That's Ooh, awesome. hello. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, everyone loves that. It's your parents. <laughs> so cute. Aww. Yeah, they're the best. Um, okay, so I think we're done with this one. And just to show you again, this is what it started out as. Amazing. And we ended up here. So not too bad of an edit time-wise. Yeah. Now, the quite the opposite. Yes. <laughs> Filling in tiles, that's oh really a fun thing to do. Um, no, I, believe me, it actually is. That's why we're gonna do it together. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but feel free to ask me questions as we're doing this because it might get a little repetitive. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to tone this one and I'm just gonna like gumdrop. Uh, Voodoo has a question. This is, yeah. what's the difference between a TIFF and say a PNG or a JPEG? Mm, okay. Um, so, a, a PNG is, well, PNG and JPEG are not ideal to edit photos with because they're compressed in a way that a TIFF and a RAW file isn't, mm -hmm. especially JPEG. JPEG, I think, is like the smallest image format. PNG is a little bit less compressed, but it still doesn't have the color data in there that you'd get from a RAW file. Mm -hmm. And TIFF is still like a very high quality, lots of data yeah. file, but it, it doesn't, to my knowledge, I actually would love to hear other people's opinions on this. It doesn't, well, not opinions, it's a fact, but <laughs> uh, it doesn't have uh, that same initial depth of mm -hmm. uh, tweaking, like data that you can get within the photo. So I think the, like, if you can try to avoid editing with PNGs or JPEGs, but at the same time, I used to do that all the time. Like yeah. I used to just shoot JPEG and like I got by with it. So it's it's not the worst thing in the world. It just kind of affects how you handle white balance yeah. and color. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and also someone said that's Mickey Hamano and Aww. that that was Mickey Kerwin. was, yep. it was on our, um, on my pro, my portfolio. Uh, I love Mickey, but this, this is actually a different model, but yeah, Mickey is great. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to apply, let's see. Let's just do gumdrop. And I'm gonna Beautiful. get the oranges back a little bit in her skin tone. I like love those tones, they're so pretty. Thank you, I love like blue and yes. pink is, the right tones of it <laughs> are very beautiful. Um, Sean is asking, do you often reference the starting photo to see how far you've gone in your edits? Totally, like right, I'm trying right now not to like keep pressing the slash button because <laughs> I just love to see the before versus yeah, after. Yeah, the difference. Now I'm going to saturate the blue a little more. 
and we're gonna apply profile corrections, which I always forget until like halfway through. Yeah. And I think overall, I just want like a little less saturation. Mm -hmm. There's lately I love I, that angle. How did thank you, you? How did you do that? So this was um, like a dining booth. My friend Katie Nemec styled. We both uh, did the set design and the styling for this shoot, and I mean she did the styling. And uh, she had this cool like dining booth in her apartment, and I was just standing on it and looking down with a pretty wide angle. I think I had like a 35 millimeter lens on. Nice. So yeah, but I was gonna say this um, lately. Like I have this weird dilemma between oversaturated skin tones and undersaturated. Mm -hmm. So I'm like just trying to strike <laughs> the right balance, um, and I never want to lighten people's skin. So like it's just really hard to get a pastel look and like preserve a skin tone accurately. Yeah, yeah. So that's something I'm really trying to work on lately. And as you can see, like her skin tone has faded quite a bit, but like I don't, it's hard to, you'd have yeah. to like paint everything back in. Yeah, that's definitely, I see. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're, well, I'm gonna fix the angle just a tad. Okay, I think we're ready to bring this into Photoshop. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> Exciting. I've got someone from New Zealand. Cool. In Vietnam. <laughs> On Anathai's like, I love pastel. <laughs> <laughs> Our fave. <laughs> yeah, love pastel. Um, oh, uh, Catherine has a question. What's the difference between Photoshop Express and Pro? I, I don't know if I've ever heard Photoshop yeah. Express, unless they're just talking about the app, because I know there's, yeah, maybe. there's PS Express. I don't know. Yeah. Um, what camera do you use? Any specific lenses? I use a Canon 6D. It's a full frame camera. And I 95% of the time use a 35 millimeter Sigma lens, 1.4. Beautiful. But I'm, I recently shot with a 24 to 70 lens mm -hmm. and that was just amazing to have for versatility of yes. composition. Oh my gosh. So that's the one I have my eye on. Oh, and also like a super wide angle, like a 13 or 14 millimeter. Yes. I would love a really wide angle one. Yeah, wide angle is so much fun. It, it is, is so it's really fun. fun to play with, which is why, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, I, wanted, <laughs> I want a new iPhone because of the wide angle I lens. I know, but. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lenses on that are crazy. <laughs> anyway. Um, so there's a lot we could be doing here. For example, there's like a lot of imperfections in the tiles, but I am not going to bore you right away with that. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about fixing these tiles. And this is something when I first started editing this project, I was like, this is a disaster. How am I going to fix these <laughs> well, did tiles? did you build this set? We did build yeah, this set. Yeah, so how did, yeah. So it was a very guerrilla style <laughs> set building process. And, um, but we, we were proud of what we made and yeah. it, it looked good overall. We just, I was like, oh man, with these compositions, we need to, I really need to get into Photoshop. And uh, it, I was gonna say that kind of matches like my Photoshop style too, because I feel like I have a very guerrilla approach to Photoshop. <laughs> like I, was I've never taken a Photoshop class or anything and I watched YouTube tutorials, but a lot of it is just like trial and error. And yeah. I think there's probably way more efficient or simple ways to do a lot of what I yeah. do, but I do what works for me and I love seeing what other yeah. people do too. So if I'm doing something crazy, tell me if you have a better idea. <laughs> yeah, always love suggestions. So if, if there's a better way or yeah. something, <laughs> let us know. Um, so I'm gonna start with the po polyg po polygonal, polygonal, I don't know, <laughs> lasso tool. Um, oops, what am I doing? And I'm just going to mimic the shape of the tile as best as I can. So this is kind of just eyeballing it. And uh, now that I have that selected, it's mm -hmm. kind of containing what I'm about to do. So it's my little container and I'm going to choose a color that is right nearby. Oops, we're doing white. White is actually easier. Oh, so I have the clone stamp on. I didn't say that. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just filling it and I'm not worrying right now. I mean, I know it's white, so it's hard to even tell, but I'm not worried about like, what the texture looks yeah, like. Yeah, what the texture, if there's yeah. like weird overlap or whatever. Oops. Just creating that. 
And if I did see weird overlap, I would go into the heel and like choose a really clean textured area and just kind of like splotch just it, it over. Yeah. Nice. So that's our first tile. There's a little bit of a splotch there, which we can just heal with photo with uh, the clone. Nice. And let's do a pink tile. That's pretty good is... for eyeballing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think I need to fix the angle a little bit on the pink <laughs> one, but we'll see. Voodoo Val says, don't be nervous about how you use Photoshop. We all use it differently. <laughs> yeah, Plus, this is cool totally a place it. where people will understand self-teaching via YouTube. <laughs> so true. Yes, that's very true. I know. I, find, I always find myself like re-watching things or like... Yeah. Having to go back to that one tutorial. Exactly. I have you tutorials forget. bookmarked. Yeah. I even watch my own, like I make <laughs> tutorials on YouTube and like the thing we're going to be doing tomorrow, tonight, I'm going to go home and like study my own tutorial because <laughs> I can never even remember how to do it when I am in the moment. Yeah. So with this pink tile, you see that there's a lot of weird funky texture going on. So I'm going to use that healing brush and I'm going to use this white texture since mm -hmm. it's nice and clean. And I can't go all the way to the edges, otherwise it Oh wait, is it like not? I thought it, I think the floor starts bleeding in if I go to the edges. Mm. Um, so that looks decent. And then yeah. I'm gonna try a different technique with this other pink one. So just trying to match the angle. Someone asked um, why or, yeah, why not duplicate a row and edit out the foot? That would maybe be a very good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, that, uh, let me let me try that after. I just want to show one more yeah. um, technique. So instead of the cloning and healing, another thing you could do is use the gradient tool, which is on the mm. paint bucket mm -hmm. menu. And uh, I'm just going to use the eye for eyedropper and get like the darkest and then the oh, light. Yeah. Oops, wait. Did I just, hold on. This one needs to be this, and this one needs to be that. Oh yeah. I think I selected two. And then, um, oops, did I get rid of my square? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it disappeared. It disappeared. So, I'm using the gradient tool. Mm -hmm. And the way it works is if you drag it, it like that's the direction of the gradient. Yeah. Except for some reason, I'm not getting the right color on the second one. <coughs> Wait, here we go. Okay, so like I'm filling this with the gradient, except mm -hmm. the first one needs to be darker. Oh yeah. And maybe that's too like, that texture is just kind of totally eliminated. So I think that's a little bit too um, monochromatic. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if I maybe chose that plus that, let's see what happens. So that's a little bit more natural. Oh, also yeah. what type of gradient do I have? I have a radial gradient. So we want this uh, linear gradient. Oh yeah, okay. But it depends on the tile too, like oh, yeah, where the light's good. coming from. So, and I kind of missed the edge there, but that's another technique. Another technique, yeah, for sure. But let's try, who was it that said? They were up there, I don't I don't. Okay, we name, missed but it, they, but yeah. thank you for your suggestion. I'm gonna try yeah. the cloning the row, or not cloning, cool. copying it. Cool, oh yeah, there you go. All right, well we are about to get ready for chat and win, so we'll make sure that you're chatting because you have a chance to win some stickers. <laughs> Yay, 100 stickers from Sticker Mule. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Sticker time. <laughs> <laughs> So much you can do with stickers. Yeah. I actually don't have any on my screen. I always feel like everyone else I see on I the know. streams I has always, like covered in all these I fun stickers. I want to do that too, but then I like don't want to do it to my computer. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe on like a water bottle or yeah. something. <laughs> Hello. Oh, chat's going fast. <laughs> awesome. 100 stickers. That's a lot of stickers. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Hello. 
Yeah, we're just waiting to hear who's gonna be the winner. <laughs> I always love this little background. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like illustrated fun little fireworks. fireworks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, stickers are great. We, yeah, you can put them anywhere. You can, they can be your business card. Yeah. You can just pass them out. Yeah. Get your name true. out there. <laughs> I think a water bottle is a good yeah. place to put them. Like this would look so good with some stickers. Yeah, with some on stickers. It. <laughs> Ooh, Sarah Potter, congratulations! You yeah, are our Sarah. winner for this stream. <laughs> so you'll get a message on Behance about how to um, redeem your stickers. Um, <laughs> but if you didn't win, that is okay because um, we will have a deal. They're ha they'll have a deal for um, ten stickers for a dollar if you go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live nineteen. So nice. everyone's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Hi from Sweden. Hello. Awesome. All right. Getting back so into it. the person who suggested copying the row is actually a very good idea. <laughs> I wish I had known it when I was doing this originally. <laughs> and it's it's looking pretty good. Some of the perspectives off. So I'm just going to, I did command T for transform. I'm just kind of dragging oh, yeah. it. yeah. That looks really good. Out. Amazing. And I don't think anyone would notice that it's like the exact same pattern, especially since I'm going to get rid of the shoe. Yeah. So I'm that using really good. clone right now. I could also copy another tile, I guess, since we're yeah. going with this technique, but let's see. That's really cool. And then let's heal it a little bit. Mm -hmm. See, I'm, oops, I'm doing something weird. I'm even mm -hmm. learning something on yeah, this. Yeah, we're all learning. It's all oh, I'm on the wrong, I see, <laughs> it's a different layer. I can't do that. Uh, let's see, Let maybe I can just, um, well, I could merge the layers, but I'm gonna just uh, awesome. do a content aware fill. Yeah, someone actually just suggested that as, <laughs> as you said that. <laughs> that might've been a really bad selection, but. Uh, <laughs> okay, that was odd. I mean, I could also just do um, an average blur, like, let's see, like, um, oh yeah, this type of thing. That's oh, that's actually we not lost that bad. some texture, yeah. but I don't think you really notice. Yeah, and that then, looks good. Oh, I kind of this is kind of off, but I think I can. Let's see, what if I put another layer on here? Oh yeah. Like that pretty much? Yeah. That doesn't look bad, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm gonna merge the layers. That might be like a Photoshop sin to like get rid of your <laughs> layers as you're working, but we are going gorilla style right now. <laughs> I love that term, gorilla style. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, everyone's got really good suggestions. Yeah, I was just gonna say, like that saved so much time yeah. to do that. <laughs> I am just having like a really elementary struggle right now, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all part of the process. Exactly. Yeah, I love these colors. Yeah, and I like the color too. <laughs> <laughs> these um, tiles were actually peel and stick tiles oh that gosh. we ordered online. That's amazing. And uh, we spray painted, so we taped the white sections mm -hmm. and then we spray painted them pink and the other set you're gonna see, it was blue. That's really so, cool. So there's like a few imperfections here still. So I'm just kind of cleaning them up and yeah. This could be a very tedious process. Like when yeah. I was editing these photos, it felt like it was never ending. Like never ending, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why like a good set designer who gets it right in the first yeah. place <laughs> is extremely appreciated. Yeah. Yeah, because you're not really thinking about these things yeah. when you're making or them. You're, or you're... Well, a lot of it was we just had no choice. Like we were like, oh boy, that's gonna be hard. Yeah. But <laughs> what else are we gonna do? Yeah. We tried to like keep the tiles as clean as possible, mm -hmm. but so, some parts of the set construction process were just like, the board is warped, yeah. like we can't do anything about that. So we're gonna have to clone out the weird boundary that's a result of that. Yeah, yeah. Oops. 
Someone's mentioning the Pantone color of the year, Living Coral oh, for yeah. 2019. <laughs> yes, so good. Love that. <laughs> Love Pantone. Um, then we have what I think are like lens sensor yes. splotches. Just cleaning it all up. Awesome, that looks good. If you guys are just joining us now, we are here with Diane Billetson. She's showing us some of her process. Um, right now we are retouching and cleaning up um, some of her uh, set the set design that she created with her partner, with a friend. Katie, yeah. Yes. Um, so just these last few little distractions, kind of like what we did in the last photo. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think it's just important, or, the really cool thing about Photoshop is that it enables you to depart from reality and create an unreal world. And in this case, we were trying to create an artificial world in person with the set design. Yeah. But also Photoshop is like what, it was when certain things weren't possible in front of the camera, you could make them possible later. So yeah. I try to remember as things are going wrong yeah. in, in, at the photo shoot, I'm like, well, I might be spending hours, but at <laughs> yeah. least Photoshop exists yes. so that I can <laughs> Photoshop Fix is a things. real lifesaver. <laughs> it really is. And now that like someone taught me a new technique, the yeah. next time, like as you keep advancing, yes. the next time will be easier and faster. Yes, exactly. Or when you get a really big budget project, you can just hire a retoucher. Yeah, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how long is your usual process for like a whole shoot? Or editing process, like how long does that take? Does it depend? It depends. I've told you before, I am, so attached to every photo I take. And <laughs> she thinks I'm crazy because like, no matter how long the shoot is, I keep at least 100 photos. It's insane. Sometimes like 150. <laughs> it used to be more, like 300, which is absolutely oh insane. Gosh. But also like, I've been forced to narrow it down because obviously if you're doing this complex of retouching, yes. like you cannot you edit 300 edit photos. Or even photos. 100. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, one of my biggest weaknesses is like culling and picking the best of the best shots. And right now I have not gotten to the, that point, but I'm getting better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like from this shoot, I would say I kept probably 75 to 100. Oh my gosh, that's still a lot. It was. That's still a lot. <laughs> um, from a recent shoot, I probably kept 37, which is an improvement. That's, actually, that's really good. Good yeah. job. I'm, <laughs> but I'm most very clients, proud of you. <laughs> thank you. Most clients don't want more than 20. No. Like, that's pretty standard. I just did yeah. a big campaign and they only wanted 13 images, and I was like, what? why? Like, how? <laughs> I mean, why? I, I, saw, I saw why in that campaign, but the point is, like, you. If you're over attached, there's really no point because the client in the end doesn't want that many photos usually. <laughs> so. Uh, also, it's just overwhelming for clients and everyone, including yeah. me, to look through that many photos. It's a lot. That's like wedding. Like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm pretty much done with this. Um, I'm just bringing it back to Lightroom. All I did was press Command S for save. And let's check out the before. So we oh, went yeah. from that to that. And Amazing. that copied row looks really good. Yeah, thanks for that suggestion, guys. Yeah. That was smart. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm hoping you guys have some good suggestions for this one because <laughs> yes. this is a process. I love that you can see like the background, like <laughs> all the stuff. <laughs> Literally, like in an apartment, like it's just so much stuff. Yes. But yeah, I'm glad we had a space. This was Katie's apartment and we made it work. Amazing, I love the pose. How do you, what, what's your like process for like Coming up and like pose. coming up with that kind of. It varies. I would say that a lot of times I, because I am worried about not thinking of a good pose on the spot, I do save images in advance, like whether it's from my past work or from other people's work, mm -hmm. as just kind of inspiration images to refer to on my phone while we're shooting. Shooting, um, but other times like a really good model can come up with a cool pose. I think Vivian. This is the model here. Vivian, she actually kind of came up with this. I think I think I told her to like somehow put her arms and yeah. legs in the air and she just she did just this. She just did her thing. So Amazing. It, it, it's all about like sh the sh sharing of creativity yeah. between all the team members and sometimes like random team members, yeah. like an assistant or a makeup artist or someone, not that they're random, but they're all equally <laughs> important, uh, ha has like a really good pose idea. So yeah. 
Yeah, love it. Sometimes in your, when you're in sync too, like if you yeah. just start bouncing off like ideas and exactly, it's just you come up with fun stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, yeah, I've just had some models that were like, like I wanted to just hire them for like being a pose coach for future <laughs> shoots because they're just so natural at it. So right now I'm kind of bothered that this dress is toned like this. Like it's, <coughs> sorry. A tough color to work with. Yeah. So that bright neon it's such yellow. It's a neon color. It's like hard to subdue, but you also don't want to subdue it too much. Yeah. And so I like, I, I want it to be saturated, but also I think it needs to be a little darker. And then the pink between it, it's like hard to isolate that mm -hmm. because like obviously you can see that well, you can't see, but the rest of the <laughs> stuff is getting going crazy. Oh, yeah. And the pink is not really changing, probably because it's orange. Yeah. So oh, yeah. They, I, to isolate that, I, I'm i not going to go into that, but you could do that in Photoshop. For now, I'm just going to leave the I yellow. I always do that, too. Like, like, I'll, like, do a color to the extreme just to see yeah, what like it affects where it is. you know yeah, yeah where it is because it helps you know like what's going to be more saturated <laughs> uh timo wants this picture to be the the next photoshop challenge <laughs> <laughs> she's like i'd love to remove that red box and make her float oh, in the space oh that's fun that would be fun <laughs> have fun with the tiles in that oh situation. my gosh i know <laughs> um i'm getting close to the toning the red is love still it. a little bit bright that's so um, fun. I always love like more orange toned reds. They're less cool toned. Yeah, like yeah. more tomato-y, not mm -hmm. crimson. Then I just want to get that mint in the background That's saturated fun. enough. Oh yeah. There you go. That pops. And let's lift the blue a little bit. Well What blue. was the inspiration behind like the set? Um that's a good question. I kind of like this was our first foray into set design and I just randomly sketched something in Photoshop actually. Like I just was like, oh, I cool. know I want there to be a porthole window and I know I want there to be like a cool floor. And I think, so Katie drew one set and I drew another. She drew the one with the, the, mm -hmm. the last one we worked yeah. on. And um, it, it they just kind of came together. I don't know, like we just ran with it. Yeah, and it was, yeah. it was pretty fun and also we're, I was really inspired by um, uh, Sing Sing Studio. Love they Sing do Sing Studio. Amazing uh, set design. Addie Goodrich and Sean. Yeah, is so good. If you guys don't know them, you have yeah. to look them you up. You need on to Instagram. look them up. Sing they Sing do Studios. so many amazing mm -hmm. things. And yeah, they amazing. had done one for I think like a Korean magazine or something that had a checkerboard floor. Amazing. And I think that's that was another part of the inspiration. So. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you, Vidaval, for the reminder. Don't forget, we're doing portfolio re reviews. So if you would like Diane to take take a look at one of your portfolios, please submit. Yes, um, I would love to There should be a little see. button above the chat. <laughs> OK, I'm almost ready to bring this in. Did I do profile corrections? No, I did not. <laughs> OK, so you can see profile corrections just kind of brighten it and yeah. correct the distortions. The edges, too. Yeah. So nice. And also, I'm a sucker for red toned shadows, like to exaggerate it. That's oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. what gives it that peachiness. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously way too much. But a little dose, if you just leave the hue on zero, by default, it's in the red zone. Mm -hmm. So I just play with that. Just like a lot of my presets yeah. have red shadow base. Yeah. Um, and I don't usually play with the highlights that much because I find that the shadows are enough. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's where we're at toning wise. And now for the very fun part, bringing it into yes. Photoshop. Yes, oh my God, I'm so excited to see this because <laughs> I, I remember seeing the final photo of this and I was like, how? Mm -hmm. I remember seeing your stories too and being yeah. like, how is she gonna Photoshop this? <laughs> like, how is she gonna make that happen? I was like, exactly. <laughs> insane. Like space constraints, you know, mm -hmm. you have yeah. to, Yeah. not everyone has a giant warehouse studio with a cyclorama nope. to like build the perfect yep. set. So. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just have to adapt. Yes. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> where are we gonna start with this one? Well, to begin with, let me say that this situation right here <laughs> is a clear demonstration of my lack of lighting knowledge because 
like the week of the shoot, I ordered a third light to try. So this was like a big blue mm -hmm. poster board from any store you would just randomly find. Mm -hmm. And I ordered a third light to try to illuminate that through the window while also potentially having the oh model gosh. stand in front of it. Yeah. Which is a very tricky lighting situation in a tiny, tiny space. Yeah. So that <laughs> did not work out. Like, <laughs> like in most of the shots, it it's just like this looming dark black hole <laughs> instead of like a porthole window. So what we're gonna do is use the quick select wand and select this circle. And this kind of enters into a territory of almost like cartoonish uh -huh, because uh -huh. you can tell that it's not a real backdrop that's like illuminated, like the yes. gradient is very obvious. Uh -huh. But we're, we'll, we'll, I'm gonna show you what happens and you can <laughs> evaluate it. So to start with, I'm gonna use the eyedropper on this blue to kind of tie it in and likely I will probably be changing it. So I'm gonna make one awesome. lighter and one darker. Let's see I how that works. I have a question looks. from Noor. Yeah. Um, she recently tried to submit her first stock photo and she was rejected for the reason that there was too much edits done on the photo. Hmm. What are recomm recommendations for stock photography? That's a good question. I think uh, st stock photography in general, there's a lot of nuances to it. So for example, um, Stocksy, which Adobe actually, Adobe Stock actually partnered with Stocksy in some form, I think. They are very open to creative photos mm -hmm. for stock. Um, there's some stock companies, I don't really know which, but some I think are more uh, generic or, you know, uh, less open to creative edits. So I think it first of all depends on what you're submitting to. Second of all, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, second of all, I think um, just like being tasteful with your edits because if you keep in mind, and I'm not saying your edits aren't tasteful, I don't know what they are, but uh, keeping in mind that they should appeal to a fairly wide variety yeah. of people because if people are buying them for their company, you know, they're, they're selling something to a consumer. Mm -hmm. So it, unless it's a very niche style, which might do well, but I think like, when I'm editing for stock, I don't change much, but I am aware of not making it like too desaturated, especially with the skin yeah. tones or too oversaturated. Just being mindful of, you know, yeah. not making it too, exactly. too, too crazy. <laughs> yeah, so I think it just comes down to tweaking what you do. And if you get rejected, just like tweak it again and keep trying. It took me like two and a half years to get into Stocksy. Wow. So keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, we're gonna go back to the gradient tool. And right now I have this like lighter blue going into darker blue and we want the lighter at the bottom, which is not that way. And if you, so the gradient starts wherever you drag your thing. So like if okay. it's way down here and it goes way up here, it won't look like much of a gradient at all. Yeah. But if it's like really close, it'll be more exaggerated. Oh yeah. And I think that's a fairly good blue. I kind of want it to be a little warmer, like more of a turquoise. So we're gonna do that. Yeah, that looks fun. And then a darker version. I like that it connects to that like that art print back there. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Oops, wrong way. So yeah. you can tell that it's kind of, uh, you know, artificial, but I think it, it does the trick and it's better than having like a looming black hole. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that this shoot, like it would, first of all, this wasn't for a client. And if it was like, I probably would have had a retoucher, like do something that looked more legit <laughs> or learned it myself over time. Um, but also like this shoot itself was kind of like cartoony to begin with in a good way. Like it's very, a, f a fake world and you can tell like this isn't like a real living room or something yeah, with a yeah. cube and a porthole <laughs> window. Although that would be really cool. I would yes. like my living room to look <laughs> like that. But I think the nature of the shoot makes it okay to kind of play with mm -hmm. a little bit of a surreal element. Yeah, of course. It's and your work, you can do what you want. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that too. <laughs> So right now I'm just trying to get a clean cut on this uh, window frame. 
And then what I'm gonna do here, I could also do a gradient, but I'm going to, to kind of preserve the texture, which there isn't much of. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the eyedropper, get the red, which is more of a coral, and make it more of an intense red. We'll start with that. Yeah, that's awesome. And then I'm gonna use a brush, which I access by pressing B. And the opacity, we're gonna make like 50%. Start with that. That's actually a really hard brush. Not that it matters that much right here, but it's better, well, wait, what am I doing? Hardness. Why is it not changing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're, let's see. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Oh yeah, because your hardness is all the way down, so that's weird. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh well. So I'm just gonna, in one fell swoop, gonna do this, because if I lift, it'll like show the edges. Mm -hmm. If I lift and re-click, oh, then I'm gonna yeah, do yeah. a second layer. Nice, I love that color, so pretty. Yeah, that's like my favorite color. And uh, again, maybe I should have done one less layer, like that looks a little bit more realistic. Yeah. Um, and the edges could be cleaned up a tad. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna just clone the blue mm -hmm. and just drag it along there. I'm like looking at you and I'm like, you, you're not using a mouse and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't even know I had a mouse, but I'm, <laughs> I'm so used to this. I'm, you use the trackpad? Yeah, I, I use a, like even when I'm working with a monitor, I use a trackpad, oh my a, gosh. a side You're trackpad. You're just like really good with your fingers and like just, Well, because a lot of the motions I do are like pinching, not necessarily with this, but like when I, if I'm going between windows, I do three fingers up. Yeah. So I just have a lot of things that I can't deal with without a yeah. trackpad. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Budabel. Um Yeah, definitely submit your portfolios. Um, you'll have a chance to review them in about, 36 minutes, so please submit. <laughs> Marcella says, I don't use a mouse either. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the no mouse club. The trackpad is pretty great. It I, is. Yeah, when I'm in a pinch, I'm just definitely. Yeah. Definitely there with the trackpad. Literal pinch. Literal pinch. Pinch motion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> All about that. <laughs> okay, um, so the window, like, it looks a little cartoony. Um, I, I think it could be done in a different way, but that's how I did it for the shoot. And the next thing we're going to work on is these walls, which is a fun situation. Yeah. Uh, first of all, we're gonna start with something pretty easy and extend the pink wall. And I think I'm just gonna eye drop this because nice. it's like a very even tone. Yeah. There's not much variation. I'm just gonna do a paint bucket. Uh, where are you, paint bucket? <laughs> or maybe maybe I'll just do fill. Never mind. Wait, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I? Here we go. Fill color. This color. Yes, that looks. And yeah. that's like not at all noticeable. Well, it is, but we're gonna blend Touch it with it the healing brush. <laughs> oh yeah. And then it looks like nothing happened. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> so, Simple, yeah. easy. <laughs> I like that. Um, the rest are not so easy. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm trying to decide if I wanna do the yellow or the green first. Yeah. I think I'll do the green first. So we're gonna do the same thing, except this one's gonna be. How did you win. end up like lighting this? Set? So I had um, two alien bees, uh, just two big octagonal uh -huh. soft boxes coming from both sides. And I wanted there to be enough space between her and the background that there yeah. wouldn't be that many shadows because yes. I love that shadowless look. Yeah. And I could have also like pointed a light behind her. Well, I had a, on the wall next to the green wall, which this is a confusing perspective. <laughs> uh, I had a white sheet hanging there to just kind of bounce light into that into, back corner. Yeah. So that was, it was nice. like 
another yeah, gorilla. Yeah, because the photo. colors are pretty even for the most part. Yeah, they are. So that makes, There's like that a makes slight, things a little easier when you're yeah. photoshopping. <laughs> <laughs> There's a slight shadow situation mm -hmm. going on, but it's not unworkable. Yeah. So what I'm actually going to have to do first is make her into a separate layer. We're going to try select subject, which is hit and miss. <laughs> yeah, you never know. That <gasps> did pretty oh well. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And I don't need to move the cube. I mainly, I mean, really I could just do this, but I'm going to be dealing with the yellow later too. So I'm just going to put her in a separate layer while I'm at it. That's smart. <laughs> Tima says, I really like Diane's photography. They look oh, surreal. thank you, Tima. <laughs> they, oh, they look surreal. <laughs> thank you. There's a whimsical feeling and vibe to, to your photos. Yeah, I try to I go love. for that. So mm -hmm. thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> These are, like, this is the part about retouching I can't stand. If, is this called, like, <laughs> clipping path or something? Because I, I get me messages from retouchers all the time that are like, I can give you clipping path services. Oh. And I'm like, I would like that, but also I don't want to pay you right now. So, you know, <laughs> like for, for a free project, I can't pay a retoucher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know what clipping path is, but this seems like a clipping path nightmare. <laughs> and you're using um, what tool to select? I'm using the quick select. Nice. And I'm like adding, adding selections and uh, deselecting, subtracting, yeah. <laughs> the opposite of adding. So this is tricky because it's like a pink sock and a... Yeah, but, and a pink background. It's almost like the same color too. Yeah, exactly. This honestly won't matter much though because I'm not doing You're anything You're not doing anything here. with that, yeah. It's mostly to do with the, the yellow and the green. Exactly. Wall. Anything that overlaps with that weird boundary. Mm -hmm. So this part needs to be precise, which luckily it's doing pretty well at. And getting there. Oh, hello, Nuno. Someone from Portugal. Oh, Very hello. Fun. <laughs> Xavier says, I found the easiest way to create a mask is just to brush it in. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. That could that work too. too. I just have like equal impatience for <laughs> all forms. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the, the tedious part for sure. Yeah, uh, I promise we're almost there. <laughs> um, Gregory says, I have a hard time with the clipping path method too. The <laughs> tutorials are quite confusing. <laughs> exactly, I, I guess that's why they can charge so much so for much it. So much for that, yeah. <laughs> okay, a little tiny bit of her dress left. Nice. Yeah, it's good that you're doing this now. It'll probably save your butt next yeah. like when you're doing the rest of the walls. Exactly. And her fingers are important. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I'm fairly new to the process of masking, so um, I feel like I would I should learn this in the masking way as well, because that might be uh, more efficient. Yeah. Someone had suggested something about using like a, or making her a smart object so that you still have the, oh. the whole image. I don't know if you've worked with smart objects I yet. I haven't but actually. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty unique um, way of working and it's fun. That's it makes cool. things a lot easier. <laughs> I, I should try that. Um. <laughs> Tima says, I love to see how professional photographers work with Photoshop. It's so different <laughs> from what illustrators or graphic designers do. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. I feel like there's one more thing I needed to, I guess that's all of her. Okay, so I'm going to copy her into a new layer. And as you can see, it's imperfect. Like some of this situation <laughs> is a little off, but the parts that matter are there. Yeah. And um, we're gonna work on the green wall now. So on the background layer, I am going to draw out a polygon and just try to match the angle of the existing lines yeah. as precisely as possible. And actually what I've done before is I just stop the green wall here and continue the tiles. So, so and I wanna make sure it overlaps so I can like clone in the yeah. boundary or heal it. And I'm going to do a color fill again, although 
I might have to do it in two separate sections. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the colors might be different up top and mm -hmm. the bottom. I might just do like a second gradient or a, a second fill later. Mm -hmm. Oops, I guess I didn't get that. <laughs> okay, color, where are you? There we go, should be there. Nice. Why, oh, maybe, oh, I have to click on color. Sorry, I'm like rusty <laughs> on this. <laughs> Here we go. Nice. Oh yeah. That so so cool. it's a starting point. Starting point. We got, we like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, yeah, the biggest thing is up here, which I can again, just um, select like this and about to there. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to select the gradient Everyone loves your workflow. I mean, she's like, she works slowly and no stress. <laughs> Very natural process. I oh, love man. it. <laughs> Must be because I'm on air because <laughs> oh, it would not normally be so calm. Well, <laughs> it is pretty stress free, except when I like start yelling at myself for <laughs> taking forever. Um, sorry, I got distracted. No, you're good. Uh, that's a <laughs> funny gradient. Okay, this color, we are doing this. This color we are making lighter. That's actually a really great way of like doing that. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I, I would have never thought. Oops, the first one was better. So it's still a little off, but we're just gonna heal it and see what happens. Taking a texture, an area with even texture. Oh yeah. And just going down here. I feel like maybe this one should have a gradient too, like from here down to here-ish. Mm -hmm. That's an uneven line, but whatever. <laughs> Actually, no, we're gonna do it right. We're gonna do <laughs> the polygon. The process. <laughs> Love it. And well, we're gonna start at the top. Okay, so light to slightly darker. Wait, I have to be on gradient. This one. Oh yeah, there you go. That. Then. That color kind of reminds me of like matcha. Matcha, yeah. yeah it's a matcha color. Yeah, <laughs> like kind of a gray muted green. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then. That might be. See, this is like an uneven gradient because it's like. It's only a little bit shadowed, mm -hmm. so I might even just do it. Sometimes you just have to like test it out. Yeah, exactly. Do a couple different things. <laughs> like I don't even think the gradient section has to be that big. I think it should be more like, oops. <laughs> Voodoo Val, I can't tell you how many times I actually think that. No, do it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just gonna remake this into like a smaller section for the gradient. For the gradient, yeah. Awesome. <sighs> yeah, that's the kind of one good thing about like working on personal projects is like you can really just play yeah. around. Like there's no like super, super pressure. Exactly. Um, you know, it's like room for experimentation. Room for experimentation, for trial and error. And I think that that's so important in general, not just in editing, mm -hmm. but um, like the reason I was able to grow my work so fast was because I just kept planning fun shoots like over and over and mm -hmm. over. And I think the more you often, what am I doing? Sorry. The more often you <laughs> shoot, the faster your style will develop. And mm -hmm. there's that quote, um, oops, I can't do that, can I? I thought I was immune to not having her <laughs> arm there. Uh, there's a quote about like when you're first starting out in a creative field, you have this vision of where you could be and then you see where you are mm -hmm. and you just get really frustrated and want to give up because you're like, I want to be up here and I am yeah. all the way down here. And the quote was something about like, just keep practicing, mm -hmm. keep playing your instrument, keep taking photos, yes. keep doing whatever and eventually that gap will shrink and you will be where you want to yeah. be. And I think the fastest way to shrink that gap is to just do it every single day if yeah. you can. Yeah, that's really good advice. Just keep at it. Yeah. 
Kendall's asking, when you're not on camera, do you have a work mode routine? Netflix on in the background, music, oh my distraction God. free <laughs> silence. Yes, I honestly was worried about today. Like, I mean, I was fine, but I was like, <laughs> how, am I gonna get through this without Netflix? Because <laughs> I have um, this app called Helium, maybe some of you know it, where it's like a permanent uh -huh. floating browser window. Oh, amazing. And so it floats over everything you're doing. And I usually just put it in the corner and binge watch like every show on earth oh my God, because amazing. I could not get through it without <laughs> something. Uh, something. I, even music isn't enough. I love listening to music, but it doesn't distract me enough from the tedious stuff. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yes, Netflix <laughs> all the time. Love it. And people like, so Grey's Anatomy is one of the things I watch because it's like kind of mindless. Sorry yeah, if yeah. there's anyone who thinks it's not mindless, but. Uh, <laughs> But like, something that you can watch in the yeah, background, like exactly. when people put on like Friends or right. like, you know, Hi, My yeah, Mother. Like, exactly. So that kind of thing. And like my friend always asks where I am. And if I haven't had a project in a while, like <laughs> yeah. I haven't watched it for like a month or two. And she's like, why aren't you watching it? It's like, because I haven't had anything to yeah. edit. So. That's awesome. Anyway, we are pretty much almost done with the screen wall. Nice. Someone said I can't edit on a small screen, and yeah, I struggle with Photoshop, especially being on a small screen. Yeah, I find myself like going in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have like a monitor at home? Or I anything? do have a monitor, but you know the problem is that uh, I've tried to calibrate it to like oh, exactly to match colors, yeah. my monitor, and I find that when I only edit on the monitor, they, everything gets like too warm mm. because it's slightly cooler. Yeah. So I have a really bad problem right now. Like I need to be on my laptop editing until I figure out, yeah. or at least compare, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Tima has another question. How do you come up with your compositions? Do you take a thousand photos and pick a few? <laughs> or well, pick a yes. hundred? <laughs> um, do you sketch out your ideas or is it more natural where things just happen? I think all of the above. I often lately, like within the past two years, I do sketch out my uh, ideas quite a bit, but um, in the moment, I sometimes just things happen that you could have never anticipated and they mm -hmm. end up being some of your favorite yeah, shots, yeah. which is the coolest thing to have happen because I think sometimes when you overthink it, it, it just ruins the creative composition mm -hmm. part of it because when I was first starting out, I wasn't thinking about anything and that's yeah. how I developed you know, an eye for yeah. composition. So I think just letting it happen uh, is the best way to do it, but also having some things in mind yeah. just to like prepare yourself yeah. But I think just being organic about it is good. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Duval says, I rewatch Daredevil, The Punisher, and The Walking Dead all the time <laughs> when painting. <laughs> I haven't actually watched any of those. I watched The Walking Dead. It's it's pretty good, but I, I, I kind of fell off because, you know, life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Gregory is asking, if you ever need retouching services, which website would you use? Is mm. Fiverr any good? I don't know if I would use a, re a website. I think I would... Uh, Go with a recommendation oh, yeah. by a friend. Like I do have um, a guy, his name is Steven. Steven, if you're watching, hello. He's probably not watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> he helped me a lot with this shoot. Um, and he's like, so if you just find someone who is a good retoucher with a rate that you're willing to pay, you know, I think that's the best way to do it. I, I've never tried Fiverr, but maybe it is good. Yeah, you never know. Let us know if you've ever tried Fiverr. Yeah. Cool. Oh, you know what? Actually, no, I think I'm okay with not having the cube selected because I'm just gonna go right up to it. Yeah, nice. So, this part is a little bit tricky. <laughs> oh yeah, because you gotta like go around the cube. Yeah, and <laughs> then like, yeah, just keep straight lines kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also like clearly these are not very straight to yeah. begin with, so you can just make it better than it first than was. Than it was. <laughs> and now, wait, what happened here? Like, is she, oh, never mind. Don't ask me what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm just going to see what happens with the gradient tool. Um, make this a little oh, yeah. lighter. That's awesome. Just under 20 minutes, you guys, until we do portfolio review. So Yay. if you haven't submitted, make sure you do that. Because um, then Diane will have a chance to look at those and yeah. give some feedback in real time. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, yeah. worked out pretty well. I might want to make it more like true yellow instead of like a brown gold. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Let's that looks see. Fun. Oh yeah. It's a little bright on top. Nice. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Probably changes every time I edit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so the walls are pretty much repaired. And the point of the gradient there, like I know it still looks kind of artificial, but the gradient at least adds some character and life to it. So mm -hmm. like uh, instead of just a yellow strip, yeah, you can kind of tell that there's some dimension depth and, or yeah, yeah dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, now we're going to try the technique that someone taught us earlier. Oh yeah, of like duplicating <laughs> it. Yeah. So Although, when you did this first, I did, did you, one by one. One by one. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I guess that if you really wanted to get accurate as yeah. far as like. I mean, and you can make it look really individual. Yeah. Like they really were distinct titles. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But <laughs> I don't think I would do that again. I'm just cleaning this up before copying it because then we don't have to do it multiple times. Uh, that's hard. Yeah, nice. Okay, almost there. And some people said that they they like Upwork, which is oh. kind of another maybe website similar to Fiverr. I've used Upwork for oh, a website fix when I was using WordPress. Mm -hmm. I wanted like a custom feature, mm -hmm. but I now use Squarespace, so I haven't needed to use Upwork. Yeah, <laughs> Squarespace is awesome. Yeah. Okay, I feel like I'm making an unnecessary mess for the time we have, <laughs> but I can't resist. So, it's actually kind of a better way of doing this, but you know what? I'm just gonna <laughs> back <laughs> off of this and take these. Do you ever feel like when you're editing, you have to like step away ever? Or yeah. do are you one of those people who like just <coughs> goes in and like until you finish? No, I definitely have to step away because I also find that um, sometimes my eyes start to like deceive me with color. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm like, <laughs> that looks good. And then I come back and I'm like, wow, you, their skin is like <laughs> completely orange. And, you know, so I just uh, have to step away and take a break. Oh, yeah. Team, a great suggestion. Um, make one full row of squares and then you can skew it into perspectives. Interesting, mm. yeah. That is a good suggestion. Oh, I've yeah. played a lot more like, recently with like skew and distort and mm -hmm. it's very useful. It is, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's like you can do like do a couple of different transformations on yeah. there. Yeah. Helps you get where you need to be. <laughs> Kevin Lee, oh my gosh, I am obsessed with Diane's photography. Make <laughs> sure you, you go Kevin. follow her on Instagram. It's <laughs> Diane with one N. <laughs> Funny story, I don't know why, but I always read that as Diane with Onan, but never Diane with one N. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people do that. And also there's a funny story behind that. So when I was in high school, I had a boyfriend uh, in the Tahoe area. <laughs> boyfriend. It was like we sat on a couch together and like talked to each other. That's all it was. <laughs> and uh, so he eventually, we started writing letters because he lived like four hours away. Yeah. And he would always spell my name with two N's. Oh, on, on no. Wolf. And I was like, okay, if I'm your girlfriend, you can't be spelling my name wrong. So... <laughs> Needless to say, that did not last long. Of course not. <laughs> That's so funny. That's a good story. <laughs> I should just like put it in my Instagram you bio. <laughs> Although I don't think it would fit. Okay, we're have, like the tile situation is pretty much working, but I have to fix the green stuff. So I'm just gonna go like this. Oops, and do a fill. Gregory says, exactly, taking a break, break is a must. You come back and you feel sorry for what you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, it's okay. good to take a break. Breaks are good. Yeah, definitely. Otherwise, I think I would go crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, people ask me, do I like shooting or editing more? And honestly, 
I find both to be a challenge because just in different ways. I think yeah. I I still prefer editing. Really? But um, like only in the sense that it's less stressful and it's like on my own time yeah. instead of yeah. like because like shooting turn so much can happen. Something. Yeah. So um, those are looking decent. There's like I think I would just uh, uh, heal them a little bit. And because you can tell, mm -hmm. oops, I'm on a weird layer. Which layer am I on? I think that layers always throw me off because I forget what I can yeah, what you're doing, what, what you're working on. <laughs> um, so I just need to like, because you can tell that they're the exact same tile with the reflection thing. Yeah. Nice. And you could spend a lot of time on this clearly uh, yeah. to make it like completely perfect because there's so many little distractions. But um, I know when you're working with a real life set too, it's like yeah, you know, if you were to just like build like make this in Photoshop, probably be a little bit oh, easier. Yeah. But because you're working with different, you know, mm -hmm. there's gradients within each square. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So that's a little bit questionable back there, but <laughs> the point is that we could spend a lot more time perfecting it, but I think overall you're seeing how it's coming together mm -hmm. yeah, from yeah. a very uh, <laughs> jank situation. <laughs> yeah. So just a few last things, like I'm gonna use a white uh, border to just... Oh, to clean that up, nice. Fix this big crack. And then you have to get really close in. To, uh, this is, I would, like a, a polygon kind of uh -huh. contains it so it doesn't go over the edge. And then you could just uh, clone it into that corner. That's probably the easiest way. <laughs> and then extend the blue a little. And clone again. Yeah, that looks, Oops. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that looks better. Gregory says, I followed you on Instagram. You're a crazy color and saturation lover. <laughs> That's they, right. I, yeah, that is accurate. <laughs> v, v accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that was not, wait, what? See, I'm like doing something funky with these. Maybe, I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay. <laughs> I just need to clean this up. There you go. Oh, mm -hmm. Kevin says, she's teaching me so many ph Photoshop photography hacks. Literally, thank you. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm glad. And if you want more, you make sure to go to her um, website because she's got a lot of tutorials on there. Yeah. And even tutorials like with ed like editing her kind of style, mm -hmm. um, especially with her presets too, if you end up getting them. Yeah. Um, she shows you how to edit with those. So definitely check her out. Thank you. And watch her tutorials. <laughs> Um, so how much time do we have until? We've got about 10 minutes okay. until we do a portfolio review. So if you haven't submitted, submit. So I think I'm just um, going to jump into um, the next one. Perfect. I think we, we don't, we've done a decent job here. There's still... <laughs> Couple some, little things. <laughs> some tweaks to be made, but you can see how we transformed that into a reasonable set instead of like, you know, yeah. missing yeah. edges and missing <laughs> tiles. So uh, it's a process, That's awesome. but it works. That's beautiful. And um, I really appreciate the techniques that people mentioned. Yeah. I'm going to look into those. Yeah, there's so much out there in. Yeah, there's so many different ways of getting to somewhere, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, way, way too many ways. So many ways. <laughs> um, so this is a really fun, like, I don't normally do engagement shoots, but these people came to me and they were I like, love it. we want to do an engagement shoot in an antique shop with our cat. And I was like, love it. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, this, these colors are a little bit of a challenge because they're like so strong and so, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they're complementary, but like they're they're also very distinct. Yes. Um, so I just love that cat's pose. I know. In there, it's perfect. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that preset isn't the best right now, but we're going to tweak it, tweak it, and Amazing. decrease the brightness a little. 
And let's see, I think we want the red to be a little bit less orange, a little darker. Oops, wrong way. Um, let's see what the orange is doing. <laughs> um, so I think we want to decrease clarity. And I keep going back and forth between darker and lighter. Yeah. And the blue. So the blue I'm not going to worry too much about right now because it's easy to tone it later um, in terms of like the exact hue. Um, and I'm going to show you something if we get to mm -hmm. that about how to keep your color consistent between yes. multiple images. Gregory's, I assume you have your own Lightroom presets. Yes, she's got presets if you want. Um, They're these right here. Pop candy presets. Um, <laughs> you should head over to her website because she sells them on there. So, yeah. Yeah, they're super fun. I have them and uh, they're the best. They're <laughs> Thank so fun. You. And you can use, if you're listening, you can use code YouTube, all caps, for 5% off. Nice. You can also get that on my YouTube channel. That's <laughs> the name. Um, Nora has a question. Um, how do you get your inspiration? I would say it comes from a lot of different places. Uh, I can even be inspired by other, I mean, not even, like this isn't a novel thing, but I, <laughs> I get inspired by other forms of art, like music, um, sculptures, architecture, uh, just paintings, mm -hmm. you know, 2D art. And I think having an interdisciplinary approach is the best way to do it because that culminates in your own unique vision. Mm -hmm. Because if you're just like scrolling through Instagram or Pinterest and saving all the photos you like, you know, you might just kind of regurgitate that yeah. eventually and everyone's just doing the same the thing. The same thing. Mm -hmm. But if you just fill yourself with all these creative inputs and experiences, like, you know, just drive a different way home or, yeah. you know, go somewhere new. And you, like, I, I find myself inspired by locations a lot. So yeah. if you find a cool new location, that's always a very good place to start for inspiration. Yeah. Yes. I like that part about you saying drive somewhere, like drive a different, a different way, way home. home. I love that. Switch <laughs> up your routine. Yes. I don't follow that advice as much as I should. Because <laughs> who really wants to drive a different way home from the grocery store? I know, store? I get lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it depends so much on my GPS. <laughs> yeah. Um, oops, I forgot to hold this one down. So much when you're editing in front of people, you're like, where are <laughs> you're my like, what? Where, where, where am I? <laughs> so I'm, I'm selecting these edges, um, and I'm going to do content aware fill. Nice. This part is always so like, I love this part. Satisfying. It's very satisfying. That's yeah. that was the word that I was looking <laughs> for. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Nora says she likes that suggestion about getting lost and to discover new things. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so that That's content good. aware fill worked pretty well. And um, I'm just going to quickly try to pick a pretty neutral texture cool. and fill in some of the really obvious boundaries and wrinkles. Oh, Gregory. Thank you, Behance. Do you have any editing challenges here? Uh, we do have a Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Um, we just started, so if you want to register, make sure to do that. Um, if you didn't miss the intro video with Kathleen, you can rewatch that um, and get yourself registered. Mm -hmm. we, we start with one tomorrow, so make sure to tune in tomorrow as well. <laughs> and if you're streaming on YouTube, head over to Behance because that's where all the action happens. and uh, You can watch the chat and everything. So. Cool. Okay, so I just cleaned a lot of it up, but now what I want to do is I'm going to go to Quick Select mm -hmm. and do Select Subject. And this particular technique is something I found on like a written tutorial, like I just searched yeah. how to make your seamless less wrinkly or like whatever in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came across this. So awesome. I'm gonna try to select like as much of her hair as possible. Although this technique is actually useful for like taming flyaways too, mm -hmm. in a subtle way. But you just have to be careful. Um, yeah. Looks pretty good. So now I'm going to do 
Command Shift I, which does the inverse. So now I have all the blue selected, mm -hmm. and I, I it doesn't matter too much because I'm picking a pretty like common yeah. blue, but I'm just selecting just those little these bits. tiny bits. Yeah, yeah. nice. And I, I'm not gonna worry about this part. And now I'm gonna select a mid tone, so like uh, right here ish and not too bright, not too dark. And I'm gonna go back to the brush, mm -hmm. which I, oh, you know what? The reason I couldn't, I think I was in pencil before. That's why oh, it wasn't going soft. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Nice. So um, what I'm gonna do now is decrease the flow and opacity to like 40-ish, 50-ish percent. Mm -hmm maybe more on the flow. And uh, I'm just going to brush over the blue. It's so fun. To I even it. it out. And you don't wanna go overboard with the shadows because obviously shadows are natural. But yeah. if you were going for like a super flat, like crazy. You could really just yeah, take it all just, out. <laughs> you could also just copy and paste your subject onto a flat blue background. That's true, but, yep. <laughs> but that's no fun. Yeah. <laughs> The uh, shadows give it that bit of like, you know. Yeah. And also keep in mind as you're doing this, like it won't apply more until you unclick. So like if I just keep going like this while holding down the click, it just won't do anything more. So I just have to like keep stroking it. Anyway, so I'm just gonna keep. Uh, just adding a little bit. Mm -hmm. And just evening out that shadow a little bit because I don't like how harsh it was. Mm -hmm. And that could have been achieved by having them further away, but we were in a very limited space. And see, this is what I mean by like, you could kind of just paint over some, some of the of hairs those. if you didn't want that. Although, yeah, it does look pretty natural. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm just gonna try to do an even stroke over the rest of it. Nice. <laughs> and that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks awesome. So I think we're just gonna save that. And I just wanted to make one last quick point yes. about, uh, so let's just see, we started here. Yeah, that looks awesome. Filled it in. <laughs> looks like you're in like a really big studio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is always the goal. So yes. now I wanted to show you <laughs> reference mode in light in yeah Lightroom is really useful. So I already have this one here from before, and like if I was, I don't think I've even cleaned it up. But toning wise, if I was matching the blue, mm -hmm. I could just um, like hold this one up here in reference mode, oh. and then drag the blue to be more like that like one. Like that one, yeah. Um, Amazing. It, it might also be like the white balance temperature because this blue is pretty, like mm -hmm. if I make it more, uh, you know, it's, it's just going back and, going forth, back and, and forth finding yeah. what works best, but you can just make sure that the colors are cohesive, mm -hmm. which is especially important in this kind of setting. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you want the images to all kind of like cohesively Exactly, look and like it's hard. part of the same. Mm -hmm. It's hard if you're going back and forth between Photoshop and Lightroom because you like lose sight of what you just did. Yeah. So I think in this case, you know, having this feature is really useful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, it looks awesome. I, it's fun to like see like a, a couple want something more unique for their engagement photos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like in studio and like just with their cat. It's so fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like I want engagement photos. Did like you have, like how was the inspiration? Was it just? Um, you guys kind of came up with stuff together? Yeah, they kind of had their own ideas to begin with, and then also I uh, kind of came up with the color palette. And um, But yeah, they're both really stylish, awesome. fun people to begin <laughs> with, and they were having a wedding in Palm Sp or outside of Palm Springs at like this uh, colorful yeah. desert inn. Fun. So Love it. Well, it looks really good. And with that, we are ready for portfolio reviews, so we will be right back. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I was 
love these helmets. <laughs> okay, we're good. Whew. Ready for portfolio reviews, you guys. I'm so excited. Um, Diane's going to be taking a look at some of these portfolios. Let me head over to uh, my little laptop over here. So first up, we've got Kirsty Hepworth um, from the cool. United Kingdom. And I will share my laptop with you so that you can nice. take a look. But we'll take a look at a little bit of her work. Nice. And then she uses Lightroom and Photoshop. So cool. She says I use it to do to retouch my images and for compositing. So nice. let's take a look at her work. OK, so this one's called Birds of Prey. Oh, that's really cool. Um, this was taken at Park Cameras Birds of Prey event yesterday, and the birds were phenomenal. <laughs> Um, is I wonder what that texture is behind the birds. Yeah. Very. I guess this is the location. Oh, that's cool. And then cool. here is her photo. Yeah, I wonder what um, texture that is. It's a, like it's very hard to tell what it is, but that's what makes it cool and interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like kind of rocks and like mesh or something. I, yeah. I'm thinking maybe that's the composited part. Yeah, yeah. Maybe took brought some over some texture from somewhere else. Yeah, that's um, really cool. And composited in there. And I love the positioning of the owl uh, in the black space. The very, it stands out really nicely. Yeah, it does. It's very contrasted, the white mm -hmm. and the black. I like wonder what's like on like what this is. Yeah, like maybe <laughs> so it doesn't fly away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the Aww, leash. <laughs> that's so cool. Awesome. <coughs> Let's take a look at some of our other stuff. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is oh, this is for one of the daily creative challenges. So here we go. I'm seeing a pattern with the birds. Yeah, we like birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. And I like how you kind of made it a little surreal. Like at first you're like, what's happening here? And then you realize it's like birds in a pond, but you yeah. don't just, it's not like you your ordinary birds in a pond picture. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. I wonder if this, oh yeah. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. I That's love that. That's a cool setting. Mm -hmm. Great contrast. And I love the ripple texture of the water. Yeah. This building looks really cool. Right yeah, there. I know. <laughs> this kind of has like a Ansel or uh, like feel oh, in yeah. a way. Yeah. It's because of the richness of mm -hmm. the blocks and. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Let's see. Ooh, this is fun. Oh, interesting. Some well, eagles. that's such that's an so interesting <laughs> combination. <laughs> Yeah. Like a, the spiral ring of a notebook, some eagles, and mm -hmm. some cool boats. Like bubbles. And then there's also like a kind of like a painted texture in the background, yeah. too. That's Which is really kind fun. of interesting. Like it ties the water in from the other shots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. fun. I like that some, they're like, oh, the images are kind of overlapping, too. Yeah. Like you can see some of the texture. And yeah, exactly. Fun. I wonder if I would have like, you know, maybe made these two kind of look very like similar in size. Maybe like oh, making yeah. one like a little a bit little, smaller or mm -hmm. something. Yeah, I would almost make the eagle one, or yeah, this one. This, yeah, <laughs> this, this one bird. <laughs> bigger. <laughs> yeah, uh, to like kind of fill that space. But then again, you don't want to lose the boats. That's true. So I don't know. Maybe like move that one more into the empty space and like make the make bald this one eagle like smaller, smaller or something. Yeah, for sure. Just to create some contrast and composition. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what the the inspiration was for this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Seaford East. This is some fun little texture. I like the colors. Yeah, that's cool. It's almost like um, kind of looks like a painting. Yeah, I was gonna say like a watercolor of the ocean, which I'm assuming maybe it is the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Let's see. Ooh, I already love this. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, that's a nice shot of a butterfly. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, you, Christy, you must be really into nature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's really pretty. Love these Ooh. colors. I love that interesting vignette, mm -hmm. like a light leak vignette. Yeah, kind of has like that film look. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before, so that's really like cool. Like a vignette like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually it's kind of like just darker around the edges, yeah. or white. Uh huh. Or or there's like a light leak on one side, but not all around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Super fun. 
Uh, this was taken last night, and it is the sun going down, looking over to the top of church. Hmm. Fun. And I think this is the one that she's talking about, actually. Oh, yeah. <gasps> so pretty. Yeah, that's a nice sunset. This is really nice. And I, I like the graininess of it, too. Yeah, me too. It's a very, it looks very film-like. Mm -hmm. I wonder what she captured this with. Yeah, I'm curious too. Like mm -hmm. if it, a lot of it was adding texture in Photoshop, or yeah, if it was or if it was like actual shot. in camera kind of yeah stuff. I know I always like have to bump up the ISO. When yeah, it's that's, like true. that's true. That's <laughs> true. Beautiful. I love the colors. Oh, I didn't even see this. Oh yeah, whole part of our it. screen is not big enough. I know this looks great. I love this leading line right here. Yeah, that's a great add addition Beautiful. to the perspective. Yeah, that's awesome. Ooh. Ooh, a windmill. Ooh, windmill. I love windmills. <laughs> I love that. It's like creepy and cool at the it same time. It almost looks like a cyanotype or yeah, whatever, like the blue undertones. The blue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I feel like all the, a lot of the, her like work has this film-esque vibe to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, one thing I would say about this one is I love how the windmill is filling the negative space, mm -hmm. but if uh, the bottom that windmill thing, the mm -hmm. flap was a little bit separated from the clouds. I think it would just be slightly stronger. Like I love creating separation between elements of interest mm -hmm. because then it's just, you see two distinct things. Yeah, yeah, good point. That's awesome. Looks beautiful. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. The, cy the cyanotype, that's mm -hmm. kind of, it's giving me those vibes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we've got another shot. That's cool. I love how you can slightly see the sunset in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right here, peeking through. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. Where was this? Lit? Yeah, I mean, where maybe is all it's this? Set, but yeah, I don't know where that is anymore. I love this. <laughs> that's <laughs> so cool. cute. I love the black and white too. Yeah. I don't know if uh, like if it was even possible to get somewhere else, but like if we could have just been slightly over to like see the seal a little bit more head on, I think it would have added some character to it. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's an amazing image. Maybe you couldn't even get yeah, over maybe. that way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Looks good. All right. Ooh, I love this. Oh, I love how the birds are filling this. that yeah, gap. That little space. And it there. almost looks like a collage, like the edge of something is cut out in a mm -hmm. ripply way, mm -hmm. and that's really cool. Yeah, it's kind of, I like that there's the darkness up here and mm -hmm. at the bottom too. And these little silhouettes. Yeah. They're so fun. And pretty color too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wonder if I would have, this is my personal thing, I love cleaning up stuff too and like making things a little bit more yeah. perfect, but <laughs> wonder what it would look like if maybe oh, some of this, yeah. the, some of these little clouds right here were just I think removed that a little bit. I would, it would have made it like a little bit more graphical, like yeah. less nature photography and That's more true. like mm -hmm. abstract. Yeah, yeah. But also just like- And kind of minimal. Clean. Yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> cool. All right, we've got a couple more. That's there interesting. That's a cool texture. Mm -hmm. That would be fun to incorporate into like another, like another a double shot. exposure yeah, type thing. Yeah, double exposure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Christy, I wonder if you've done any like other double exposure shots with nature. I think it's really fun to yeah. mix photos like that. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Some Ooh. fireworks. That's fun. Yeah. I love how these like little lights. Like yeah, yeah lights. it looks like uh, <laughs> some type of metal sculpture. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Another windmill. Another windmill. Love it. Oh, there's like a kind of painterly texture in yeah, there too as well. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. It gives it kind of an old quality. Although I'm not sure. I feel like the other one was more clean and I'm not sure the texture adds that much to what would have been like a pretty clean photo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's an interesting experiment. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Ooh, oh. I love this. That's really cool. That's very Van uh, Gogh. Yeah, yeah, very Van Gogh. I, I can see where the inspiration came from. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, super fun. Lots of nature shots. Love it. Yeah. And I'm gonna jump into one of the, her other projects. I'm, okay. gonna, I'm curious. Beach at night. Ooh, okay. Hmm, that's cool. I wonder what that stuff is in the sky. Yeah. Probably just like little sparkles or something. Yeah. Maybe added in Photoshop after. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe the idea is 
beach at night, like it's actually daytime, but she's adding stars. Yeah. Fun. Oh. Oh. Is this Wait, like, is that a, is that a, is toilet, that a toilet seat? <laughs> or a toilet? <laughs> That's really hilarious. Oh my it gosh, is. I love it. And I love that there's just flowers coming yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's not a bad idea for like a planter in your backyard. Yeah, actually. Like a spray painted toilet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> Flushed with success. Oh my God, that's amazing. Chrissy. <laughs> Great fun. <laughs> that's so funny. All right, we've got another oh. little composition. Sunglasses. I don't know if these are like jars or... Yeah, you know. jars and orange or something. Yeah. It's interesting. Ooh. Oh, so I love that I idea. I love this. I love like the idea of uh, cutting something out and holding it in the frame. Yes, yes. Which you could also do in Photoshop. Maybe this yeah. was done in Maybe Photoshop. Maybe this was done in Photoshop, know. yeah. But it looks cool. I love that. Yeah. That's so fun. Right. Mm. And that's it for that one. Cool. Yeah. All right, well, that was really awesome. Um, we're gonna jump over to our second um, portfolio. Thank you, Kirstie, um, yeah, for submitting, this was fun. Um, yeah, I would say just definitely play around with, you know, the textures and yeah. um, maybe removing a little bit of texture from certain images or. Yeah, I think um, like it, you'll, you'll eventually find the balance of what's too much and what's too little. I think you've done a good job so far. Yeah, your and, colors are beautiful. I yeah. love the colors. Of, and you shots, clearly yeah. have access to a very beautiful place. Yeah, wherever so. you're at. <laughs> <laughs> cool, thank you, Kirstie. Okay, and then we've got our second one. Uh, Brent Fox, he's a creative art director. He loves to do it all. Uh, Wahoo Studios, maybe that's his agency or yeah. maybe where he works at. Hmm. Um, he uses a lot of different um, tools, so let's get into it. Wow. I just wanna read what he does. I love working with creative people and fostering an environment um, where everyone can grow and produce their best work. I'm an experienced manager and artist. Um, while taking care of the details, I keep the big picture in mind. That's oh, awesome. Cool. Um, let's see. Maybe this one's kind of fun. Both my son and daughter are competitive ballroom dancers. Well, that's um, cool. Spend a lot of time at ballroom events, and I take a lot of photos. Um, wow. So ballroom dance Latin. Well, Ooh. that looks like it should be the cover of uh, like so you think you can yes. or, like the promo <laughs> yes. of so you think you can dance or something. Love it. <laughs> Yeah, the colors are fun. I love these poses. Yeah, that's really cool. I love how the arm, the limbs are filling the uh -huh, space. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I would be curious to see how you make something like that. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. I'm guessing that's your son, maybe. Yeah. Or or maybe, or maybe they're just that. Maybe it's just yeah. maybe just random people. Yeah. Fun shots. That's really cool. My grandma was a ball, or I mean, she's still around, but she yeah. did ballroom dancing for a long time. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, these are cool. Ooh, I love this expression. Oh, yeah. The and shot. her outfit, too, is like it adds a lot of interest. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, I love her outfit, too. It like really leads your, mm -hmm. like, leads you down the photo. Yeah. So fun. I'm wondering how, like, if, getting the colors in the background. I feel like they're not like yeah. normal for like a, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like it, there's like a I mean, it could also be the lighting, like cause That's a lot true. of dance events have the Have lighting. the lighting, yeah, for but sure. But also maybe he adds his own. Mm -hmm. Adds a little bit of, yeah. Cause yeah. it even almost like, like there's a little bit of a halo effect around kind of. Yeah, the, a little bit. The dancers. Fun. That's a good expression. <laughs> I love that. I wonder what lens you're using yeah. to capture these. Like, are you sitting far away or? Mm -hmm. So fun. That's cool. That's almost Very just like a, a normal portrait. Yeah, like, yeah. It would be cool. Ooh, love the colors in this one. Yeah, it's like uh, purple and yellow purple is always yellow. a good combination. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. I'm gonna check out something else, let's <laughs> see. All right. Maybe Jane of the Jungle. Ooh. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. That's so this good. This is amazing. How, like, how do you even begin to do something like this? Yeah. <laughs> and also, is this like a spin on Tarzan? Like, it's Jane instead of yeah. Tarzan? Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Close-up shot of Jane's face. Amazing. That's really cool. I wonder what, like, what programs 
were used. Yeah. If it's just all Photoshop or a combination of yeah, multiple. I don't know. I find illustration so fascinating because mm -hmm. I can't do it. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't like. How do you even come up with the stuff in your head? Like, yeah. Oh, my God. oh he it's said so he insane. uses a telephoto lens. So oh, he nice. Can get closer stuff. Thanks, Brett. This is awesome. What? Yeah, I'm curious to know what programs you use for this. This is beautiful. Like so much detail. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Oh my cool. gosh, I love that you shared the, the process, process of this. This is so cool. That's really cool. Oh, wow. and adding the light. Yeah. I'm just going to get in close real quick. That stuff is painted in Photoshop. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Amazing. Great Do job, you man. use a tablet with a you pen? You have to. You have I to, I bet right? you have to. <laughs> I find tablets so hard to work with. Really? Yeah. I mean, you would think they would be intuitive, but I'm, like, so used to the so trackpad. So used to the trackpad and, or the mouse or something. Yeah. Amazing. This is so cool. I just love how you added the light in, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes it really stand out. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's take a look at something else. Let's see. I'm curious what this is. Babies versus demons. If this was a real <laughs> game, which side would you choose? Babies <laughs> or demons? Oh my gosh. Uh, That's amazing. Hmm. What would uh, you choose? <laughs> I guess demons, I feel like. Let's see. Oh, but that baby looks so cute and powerful. That's true, <laughs> but I like kind of like being on the demonic Ooh. side. <laughs> <laughs> Babies versus demon. That's like a fun concept. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brent says he uses a tablet, so that makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. I that yeah. It would yeah. be hard on a trackpad. <laughs> Very fun. Love the detail of all this. Yeah, and how, like the light is shining mm -hmm. from behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always like with illustration, it's like so much to think so about. So much to think about. Yeah, perspective angle. It really lighting. is a science thinking of where the light comes yeah, from. Yeah, you have to really understand angles. lighting mm -hmm. in general to to illustrate. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Thank you, Brent. All right, I'll just kind of want to take a look at this one. Created for a game on concert series. Fun. Hmm. Maybe like a little poster for for an event. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And symphony Orchestra. That's Super so fun. cool. Yeah, great job, Brent. This is awesome. <laughs> I love the colors, too. It's very kind of like spacey. Yeah. In a way. It like, almost reminds me of Wally. -E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just the, uh -huh. the vibe of it. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah, I've got a lot of skills. This client needed for a logo that instantly communicated video game and would attract video game fans. Hmm. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm wondering if the orchestra is playing a video game soundtrack, because that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Brent. Um, this is awesome. You have a lot of good work, um, a lot of fun illustration. and Yeah, you're really talented. Yeah. This is awesome. Keep at it. I would say, just, yeah, do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Thank you for sharing. All right, well, we'll head back to what you're yeah. working on a little bit. So, um, I think I basically finished talking about this, but just keep being attentive to how the color is woven throughout an entire shoot is really important. Even if I have like a red shirt in one of the early shots, and then I have like a red chair in a totally different scene, sometimes I like to use reference mode to make sure the reds are you know, the right tone, so if that they're, if they're displayed next to each other, mm -hmm. they look good. And also something I love doing in general is just using print mode. Uh, you can set up a layout for, like if you were gonna print two vertical photos mm -hmm. together, and then you just uh, can see what they look like. Especially like sometimes I do this for a blog post where I export the photos like this so that they're in a diptych, mm. so that when I put them on the blog, like I can have yeah. two vertical photos two vertical in photos. less space. Yeah. yeah. So like in this instance, I might like go back to reference mode and adjust this blue to be more like this. To even more like even, that one, yeah. Even though That's these right. are separate shoots, but just for an example. Just to like kind of match it or like have them be together yeah, and, and like, be look cohesive. good together. Yeah. And also uh, social media wise, like on Instagram, I, I think of Instagram as one of my main portfolios because that's where I got get a lot of my business from. And, you know, I Instagram is pretty much the main source of everything for me. So I try to, 
like keep my colors consistent. And I admittedly don't like do this cross checking between lots of shoots, yeah. but I think I just mentally try to keep track of what kinds of blues and reds I use mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. And the presets help with that. <laughs> do you think about like color when you're shooting in regards to like your ed like editing? Yeah, I think, well, just in the past year or two, I've kind of had a revelation that <laughs> uh, like the clothing or whatever has yeah. to be more saturated than you want it to be in the end. Especially like, for your editing style. Yeah. yeah. Like I was saying about your jumpsuit earlier, yeah. like I would need it to be an actual purple, purple to color. be faded into to lavender. lavender. So that's a tricky thing to navigate sometimes because like sometimes I think I found the perfect outfit and then it's a nice pink but it's actually very pale and it just yeah. kind of washes out yeah. or something like that. But um, yeah, the way you create things in front of the camera is as much as if not more important than what you do afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It kind of leads into the editing process makes it exactly easier for sure. Yeah, um, awesome. Let's. We have about nine minutes left. Yeah, yeah, or about five minutes left. Maybe. Five minutes, okay. Um, let's see, I just wanna show you briefly, uh, this is another shot of my parents it's actually so taken in our in their driveway. Oh. Um, these flowers were blooming and I had this purple panel from another Amazing. shoot. And I just was like, I, can't, I have to take advantage of this opportunity. <laughs> yeah. And I made them lie down on the driveway. <laughs> so I just wanna- What do they think when you're, when you're telling them to do this kind of stuff? <laughs> I mean, like my dad has gotten really into it. Like, so I put Aww. I put them on Stocksy, and uh, I <laughs> promised them that like they'll I'll take them out to a meal proportionate to what they made that oh month my on Stocksy. <laughs> and so my dad like thinks he's famous now because Love it. he's been like in commercials for finance companies and stuff <laughs> with the Stocksy images. <laughs> That's so, so cute. But anyway, I think they're kind of like. They put up with it because yeah. it's me, um, and they kind of enjoy it. But during the actual, during photo, the actual they're like, thing, they're like, "When okay. are we done?" <laughs> okay, Aww. I'm gonna go with lollipop, and then so fun. gonna reduce the brightness. Yeah, that's super fun. It's a little too warm, and also like change the way you approach family portraits like yeah. make get a, make everyone wear a certain color or like it just it can be so fun in ordinary set no I can't talk ordinary settings to curate wow what is this doing <laughs> to curate what everyone is wearing mm -hmm. which people might be really annoyed by that but like yeah. it makes such a cool family photo if everyone is on the same page and like is an actual stylized yeah. photo yeah yeah it makes like such a difference too, and it's, it's just like a unique factor. Yeah, exactly. So fun. So with this green, like mm -hmm. I, I usually hate greens in photos, so I tend to like desaturate just them. Desaturate them. And in this case, I'm like even sliding it over to the yellow so that it kind of blends in with mm -hmm. the yellow flowers. And I'm gonna make the yellow a little bit more orange. Yeah. And then again, his pale green shorts. I made him wear the same outfit yeah. as the other <laughs> shot. Um, I'm just gonna paint some color in there. Just bring it back a little bit. bit. Mm -hmm. Nice. Because I think it adds something versus just looking yeah. kind of pale. Pale. Mm -hmm. And that's looking pretty good. The purple, I can't decide what's too much. <laughs> just kind of eyeball it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And like, <laughs> If I brought this all the way down to like no red saturation, saturation that looks kind of nice, but also yeah. like having that warm undertone is just appealing to me. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Yeah. I'm gonna clone out this like random rock thing. Uh, someone said, uh, Julian said, uh, Duane, Duane Hansen is her inspiration. Do you know who that is? Duane, Duane Hansen. Duane Hansen? I don't know. I feel like like you have you've got like Jimmy Marvel vibes. I do love in the like Jimmy Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I I'll have to look up Dwayne yeah, Hanson. Yeah, Dwayne Hanson. Okay, cool, <laughs> awesome. Um, well, well, we're just about up. Yeah, I, I oh don't have gosh. time to extend the edges, but I hope you enjoyed what you saw. And tomorrow we're gonna get into really yes. fun stuff too, like 
uh, making clones, not like cloning, but making multiple people out of one oh person God, and adding some creative interest with graphical elements. So tomorrow should be fun too. Yeah, tomorrow's gonna be fun. And yeah, tune in again, behance.net slash live. Make sure to go follow Diane on Instagram and check out her website because she's got a lot of fun stuff on there. <laughs> but we will see you guys tomorrow at 9.30. All Thank right, you. thanks for tuning Bye. in.